Welcome to the third in the series of podcasts that we're publishing uh, and we'll continue to publish over the next co- couple of weeks or so. I'm delighted today to be joined by Shelley Hewitson from Citizens Advice. Um, I'm also joined by Jenny Brumby, who is uh, leading a volunteer group down in the south of the county at Millham. And also Emma Wilson, who's got a unique perspective of uh, support in this crisis as both a, an elected county councillor and as an employee of Copeland Council coordinating a lot of our efforts to support the, the most vulnerable. Shelley, can I, can I just start with you? It's, uh, you know, I'm guessing uh, your workload within Citizens Advice has gone through the roof since the start of this crisis. It has, yeah. Um, we're dealing with, um, all our workers are working remotely, so we're not doing any face-to-face advice. Um, but it still is business as usual. So we um, are providing advice by telephone and by email. Um, and yeah, the, the amount of inquiries that we deal with uh, compared to last year um, are up by 20%. Um, we're dealing with a range of, of, of different issues now. Uh, but the main uh, cause of people coming to us at the moment are regarding benefits, universal credit, employment, access to food and, and care support um, and debt. Yeah. Emma, you know, from a Copeland point of view, you're co- coordinating um, our efforts to, to support the most vulnerable. Can you just give us a little bit of insight into what that involves? Yeah, so um, b- before I even start on anything, I have to praise our community groups because they um, have been the driving force around supporting our communities. I know Jenny's part of that. Um, we're down in Millham and we've got 29 groups throughout the whole of Copeland doing that. And my job was to come in and um, support those groups, but also look at the emerging issues around food, prescriptions, um, support for people. And I work collectively with the community groups and citizens advice. Um, so what we did really early on is about putting those processes in place. And I think um, the pressures around that, if we didn't have the community groups, we wouldn't be in the situation we're at now. So um, from, I think it was the 25th, uh, 23rd of March when we went into lockdown, we only had um, a couple of days to get the hub up and running. And I have to really praise the Borough Council and County Council staff for the hub. I know they've received about 351 calls and um, the processes are they put in place in getting people to ring and filtering the food through uh, our community groups, prescriptions through uh, and support through Citizens Advice. So it's very much been a hands-on um, process, pl- uh, getting processes in place. And now we're coming out of having the processes in place. We're now um, really tackling the issues around food. And that is, um, we have a food pantry that runs in um, Kalitamua. And that is run by uh, volunteers, the COVID group, and was funded through the local committee budget. And we are seeing massive pressures around food. Um, so I know Citizen Advice um, are seeing the pressures. We've got PEC who are also feeling the pressures, but it's very much of trying to put support in that isn't just about food. So obviously we can put a parcel in somebody's um, house, but what are the other issues? And we're looking at the bigger picture of that as we look to move out of COVID. And um, once the government starts to look at where we are and the guidelines, it's what other support do they need? So we're looking at the bigger picture around are people going to need help with training, support, Um, guidance and things like that that's one of the real big pressures that we're facing but I do um, I do have to say that this has been a very much unified approach you know with the council seller field the supply chain our community groups it's just been a collective response and and that's where sort of where that is just continuing to offer what support our community groups need um, to to continue with this because it is um, a marathon um, and not a sprint and we know we're going to be in this for some time. I, 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 you know, it really is partnership in action. Jenny, uh, you know, on the front line of it as a as a volunteer, you know, you know, Millam in particular, you know, it's not that long uh, since we had the you know the big flooding issues that affected a lot of the community. Um, and I know the uh, you know the group that you've got set up does an awful lot of work to support people through that. And almost we've come into the coronavirus, what, what are the main sort of issues and, and what are the, the volunteers really getting themselves involved with down in Millen? 
Um, well, our Around the Coombe group has been set up for about six years now, and we're based from Wabbathwaite to Broughton, and we link in with all the parishes and the councils um, and volunteer groups within that area of about 11,000 people. So yeah, the, the flood in 2017, it kind of gives us a bit of a practice on, in, on, on an emergency situation. Um, and we have um, over 60 fantastic volunteers already set. So when this happened six weeks ago, we were really, um, it, it, was, it came together really quickly for us because we'd done it before and we knew what we were capable of doing. Um, the hard bit was, yes, everything has to be done remotely because we have to ensure the safety of everybody and, you know, the strict guidelines on distancing. Um, but overall, absolutely overwhelmed um, with the support that we've had um, from our town council, from Copeland and from county council. Um, no negatives. Um, the sadness comes now is that, um, and it's what Emma said, um, is around financial strains and food poverty. Um, and we're down here, we're making up over 200 um, food parcels now weekly for people. Um, and having the guidance and the support with citizens' advice and Phoenix Enterprise um, is fantastic because we've got to look at it at the long scale, not just today. It's how we can help um, our most vulnerable people in our community. And that's not just older people. Our vulnerable ones are from zero age right up. You know, we have to ensure that we're looking out for everybody within our community. Shelley, just to come back to you, with, uh, you know, I've seen in your notes that you've, you know, as an organisation, you've got over four hundred thousand uh, pound to Copeland residents. You know, is that working in liaison with local authorities? You know, are you dealing with our Benefits department, our our housing and homes department. Are you are you in regular dialogue um, with with the councils and local authorities? Absolutely, um, and and yeah, I would reiterate um, what Emma and Jenny have said. Um, it does take partnership working, and at times like this, we we you know we all need to work together um, in order to make sure that we we find solutions for, for people that that are in crisis. Um, yes, yeah, since the twenty third of March twenty twenty um, until yesterday, we've secured um, just under four hundred thousand pounds worth of income gains for clients. Um, and that is money that's coming into, into Copeland and that's money for Copeland residents. We know um, how vulnerable people are at the moment. Uh, the inquiries that, that, that we're getting um, relating to employment, for example. So compared to this period last year, um, we've had over a 500% increase in employment inquiries. And that can be anything from what are my rights as an employee, um, understanding contracts, understanding furlough, um, it's specialist advice um, that people are, uh, are needing. We have to be able to work in partnership and, and, you know, Emma and I speak probably on a daily basis um, at the moment about support that's available for local residents. Um, and again, with Cumbria County Council, I'm almost in daily talks with them about, you know, either individuals or groups of people and how working together we, we can put things in place for them. And I would um, definitely support what Emma says. We need to be looking long term now. We need to be making sure that there is... Um, advice and support available, um, financial advice and support available for people over a long period of time. This isn't something that's going to go away quickly. Um, the impact of COVID is, is going to be with us for many, many, many months, if not years. Um, and working together across Copeland, we need to make sure that the support and advice is there for people. Emma, you know, across the borough, you know, we're seeing a huge amount of dump, particularly in food aid. Um, in getting food out to, you know, both, both, you know, up here in the north of the borough and now uh, we've got Jenny and her team are, are doing in the south. How are we identifying uh, where the need is? How, how are we, you know, you know, how do we know that we're, we're catching everybody and, and it's being delivered to the right places? So, so this was a real concern for me at, uh, at the start because when we first went in this, everybody was just doing the best. You know, community groups were getting food out. The councils were getting food out. We've got our Bainbridge bags that are funded by Sellafield. And there's a real need for food. So what we've now put a plan in place is for the food pantry and for the Bainbridge bags, we're using citizen advice and um, PEC 
to do uh, assessments with people and that's so we can make sure we, that we get food to them but also if there's other additional issues so look, I know that the town council and 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 are doing their their thing as well so they're doing some assessments I know Egremont Town Council have been doing bits and pieces in Egremont so what we wanted to do was try and have a unified approach so that we knew that if for instance Joe Bloggs came for a food parcel we weren't just giving him food and then that was it so what we're doing is those who are medically vulnerable are all filtered through the hub and those who are financially vulnerable are filtered through Citizens Advice and PEC and then a plan's put in for that person so they will still get a food parcel, but they're on our radar if they need things around debt advice. So if they need other bits of advice around employment or being furloughed and um, citizens advice and PEC have produced a leaflet. And what we're going to be doing, and this is a call out to our community groups, we're going to print some of them. And it would be great if our community groups could get those distributed out for us so we can get that information out to those in need. And then obviously we still got our... Bainbridge bags that are going out and uh, and we're now seeing a real need in care packs uh, so we've now produced 100 care packs and we're going to do children's packs things with nappies and things like that in so we're going to be working again with citizens advice peck and family action and some of our third sector organizations who are already identifying those in need and and um, to reiterate things around period poverty so we're now going to be putting sanitary project products out with all our food parcels because obviously there's going to be young women out there that might need this and might still feel very embarrassed about that. So we're not going to ask the questions. Um, we're not going to ask that over the phone because it's an embarrassing thing to ask someone. We're just going to get those out where there's women in those households. Right, but Jenny, is that kind of consistent with the approach down uh, in Millen? Yes, very. So um, our food pantry has been going for 12 months already. So that was already set and it's run by our mayor, Angela Dixon, and it's perfect. So we just linked into that and looked what they did and really upscaled the boxes that we were sending out. So, yes, we put things like um, toiletries, sanitary towels and things like that. But we also, if they've got pets, if they've, you know, and they can't afford to feed them, we put things like that in. So they have a form to fill in with us. And so I'm sure it's going to be very similar to what you're doing. Um, but it, this is perfect for us from, from a Copeland approach because we just don't have the time um, to talk to everybody about their finances. And we want to make sure they're getting the correct information. So having the flyer. And we can put these with our food pantry boxes as well as delivering them um, is absolutely perfect because that's the gap that we didn't have. Um, there's a lot we can deal with, but the financial side needs really to have professional advice. And we just weren't in a position to do that. So, no, I, I love the approach that that Copeland's taken. So you are you uh, constant dialogue with Emma and Amanda? and Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shelley, uh, back, back to you, you know, I've seen a, you know, you know, we've already discussed a huge increase in your workload. Yeah. So if, I, if I'm living alone um, with n little or no access to social media, um, how do I know how to find you? Yeah, so um, you can you can phone us. We've got our website and um, we're trying to get more information out. So like via the, the leaflets that um, Emma was was discussing and um, we're going to be trying to get some more into into local press. Um, I would advise anybody um, to have a look at our website that has got the most up to date links on and um, if you can manage to do that. But if you are struggling, just give us a ring, give us a call and we'll, we will work out the best way in which we can to help you. And um, like I said before, it is business as usual for us. So whatever your need, we will help you. So benefit applications we're still doing. If we've been helping you with um, a submission for a tribunal, that work's still going on. If we've been helping you with your debts, that work still going on um, give us a call um, our telephone number is 693321 you can call us that way um, if you're in touch with family and they can drop us an email we have a special um, email set, uh, account set up that's um, specifically for advice and that's advice.copeland at gmail.com send some information to there and we'll give you a call back um, and just just be aware that you know the advice and support is out there. There is such a lot of good work that's going on in Copeland um, and, and we're all here to support. I, I don't want anyone to feel alone. Um, you know, we're here to help. Emma, obviously, uh, you know, with the amount of food that's going on, you know, you know, I've seen firsthand that uh, 
a Clayton Miller last week when I was up there, and uh, and the videos that have been posted from from Miller, you know, you, you know, when you look at right across the borough, um, it's a huge amount of aid. Now these things have got to be funded. Um, you, you know, how how is that happening? Yeah. So um, again, prayers for um, both the county council and the borough council because um, they've put funding into packages. Um, Sellafield and the supply chain have been absolutely amazing. But what I really want to say to people that community groups can apply to Cumbria Community Foundation to, to do their own response. And the take up hasn't hasn't been as, as good in the West as it has been in other areas. And we, we, we can um, support with applications. There's people that can come in and help do applications if that's an issue. Um, and I, I just urge people, if they're not sure, to get in touch with me and I can advise them on the best route. So there is funding pots out there. But going forward, we know that this emerging food need is not going to go away. And we are looking at a scheme where we can possibly create employment, you know, because what we've got to understand, and I know your food pantry will be different, Jenny, because it's run in a different way. But our food pantry is totally run by people who are volunteers. Cleet Mill COVID group are amazing. But the majority of them are going to eventually go back to work and the need's not going to go away from them. So it's about looking at uh, the, the future plans and how do we create employment? Because we can't run society on volunteers and people. And I know volunteers are the bread and butter. And if we didn't have volunteers, we wouldn't be where we are now. But really going forward, we need to put a plan together to look at that emerging food issue. And I and our team are looking at that plan um, around creating employment for people and it being a bigger plan and having a plan going forward around the things that Shelley's discussed. So making sure that the person has a holistic um, approach to support. It's not just food. It's not just money. It's what can we do to enhance your life and ensure that you don't need this food because because we put you in a better position by giving you support. Excellent. Jenny, um, you know, Emma mentioned Cumbria Community Foundation. I think you've been uh, uh, one of the applicants who has benefited from that, aren't you? Yes. Um, thankfully, yesterday we were awarded £5,000 from um, Cumbria Foundation. So we're absolutely chuffed to bits. We've been using our Millam Disaster Fund money, which um, was raised by the community back in 2017. So this, um, this just cements the, the, the food support that we can give um, going forward because we don't know how long this is going to last and we're hitting 200 now and, and our numbers are increasing daily um, we get our referrals from our GP surgery from our integrated care community from our school nurse our school teachers and um, so that's how, how we get our referrals at the moment and sometimes it's word of mouth as well. Um, people are very proud um, about coming forward, asking for help. So that's why it's important that if there's anybody in the community, who, their friends or family are vulnerable, then speak to us and we can signpost them or we can, you know, we can discuss how we can help them and link in with them. One point that I do want to make um, is regarding, um, we rely on social media, which is amazing. We have 18 social media groups on our around the coom pages and yes it's brilliant and the flyers are great as well but not everybody can read so we took the decision um, about four weeks ago to phone lots of vulnerable people in our area and we did that off the electoral register um, and out of the phone book and i know that's a bit crazy to say but we picked up a lot of vulnerable people from doing that and these are the ones that we're helping because there was social isolation Social isolation, social isolation, and um, so th those those are the people that we're helping now. So we have to look at every way of communication, not just from flyers or social media. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. everything I think really is about partnership, and partnership in action here. And uh, you know, I know down there, Jenny as well. You've had uh, significant help from Gillian Elliott at the county council, uh, of the one and. Uh, I think it's worth those recognizing that well. Oh, a hundred percent. I think, I, think um, I don't honestly think we would be in the position where we are successfully if it wasn't for Gillian. So I really want to say, you know, thank you so much. You know, we're in contact daily and fantastic support from her and her team, uh, Maria Hewitt exceptional. And, uh, and what I, I want to be able to take forward from this is that we continue with those close engagements because we have had a lot of dislodged um, relationships over the past 
and you know we all work better together um, and I think you'll agree with that Mike and and we are so proud of our community but we're also really proud of how everybody's just drawn a line over everything and moved forward um, because we have the same idea we just want to help as many people as possible but yes um, and, and a, a great thanks to you all it's been superb yeah, it's a uh, more. It's you know the partnership work and uh, has been fabulous right throughout. Mm. Uh, you know, it, not not just the borough but the the, the whole county. You know, the council yeah. are working better together um, than yeah. ever before. But you know, we are all in it together. You know, at the moment, you know, the message is, is from the government is that the, the lockdown goes on. Um, we're we're at a we're at a crucial point, and you know, the message is still stay at home, protect the NHS, and save lives. But we've got to have one eye on the future. Um, you know, Shelley, what's your views as we emerge out of lockdown and what do you think the, the, the issues are? Um, I think the emerging issues for us and what we're looking at now is we're, we're starting to see um, debt being an issue for, for a lot more people, people that may not have had um, been in a situation before where they've not been able to, to cover their, their monthly costs or not been um, able to pay their bills, their credit cards, whatever else. Um, so I think that um, for us, um, one of the concerns is um, demand for debt advice. How are we going to um, make sure that uh, we can meet that demand and that everybody has got the access they need to uh, key uh, key financial support? Um, so yeah, debt, debt is one of the big ones for us. Um, I would say that there are um, a lot of um, options for people who are dealing, who have debts and, and who are dealing with um, financial issues. So we have had over the last week an increase in people that have been coming to us that um, have been furloughed, for example, and are now realising that at the end of the month there isn't going to be enough money there um, to cover their costs. For those people, those people who may have had a reduction in hours and that might be themselves or their partner, please contact us, get in touch. You know, there are there are options um, out there. You know, we can provide that help and support for you. We want to make sure that um, people do have access to food and care packs and everything. But um, our role as IC is to make sure that we're dealing with the underlying reason of why people need food and why people need care packs. So please, please get in touch. Um, we are a confidential service. Um, you know, we're an independent service and, and, and we work with you to... To, to find a way forward. Thanks, Shelley. Emma, you know, I'm particularly mindful of the, the self-employed, um, you know, and, and, you know, they're looking for a safe way back um, into work. Is, is that the feeling you're picking up on the ground when, you, when you're dealing with people? Yeah, and I think that is because a lot of these people don't have access to money. And I know a lot of people have contacted me in my role as a counsellor to say they didn't meet the guidelines because they've just started a new job and they are really struggling and, and, and they are struggling, um, not, not just them, but their families. And I think if I can pick up on Shelley's point, um, definitely the, the financially vulnerable going forward is a big factor. But what one thing that we need to pick up on is mental health and people's mental health is going to be a real big factor going forward. And that's with our unemployed, that's with our children, and our young people. And we're going to see real emerging issues around that. And as, as a council, as third sectors, as a community group, um, we're, we're going to need to sort of band together and support that. And one thing I really do want to pick up on is, um, is the volunteers. We don't want to lose them. So I know, Jenny, you're in a unique position because your group was already set up. But we, uh, the rest of the county have, have set up groups that have never had groups in them and doing amazing things. And we want to keep that. So we want to keep that momentum and, and keep that structure and be able to use them to support some of the emerging issues going forward and work with us because it's just been brilliant and we don't want to lose that. And Jenny, same question, really. Yeah, um, I, I think to agree with, with both Shelley and Emma, um, uh, one of the things that we're mostly worried about now, other than the, the financial side for people, is definitely mental health. And what we tend to do, we get round about 50 calls a day. That's filtered between um, myself and um, Jen Jakubowski, the other coordinator. Um, so we'll we'll get calls coming in, but 
they'll need jobs doing shopping, you know, signposting. Um, and we make sure that they get a call within a couple of days after so that we're just checking up on them. So we're befriending them. Um, and we keep doing that over and over and over again because circumstances will change from one week to the next. Um, so it's really important that we really keep the support network around these people. Um, something else that we, we kind of debated on our main page last night was it's really, really important um, to make sure that you keep your distance for people. But it's really, really important for people that are living on their own that they can open their doors. They can talk to somebody across the road from them um, and, and have a conversation. As long as they're following the complete guidelines from the government, there is no reason why they cannot stand and talk to their neighbour across the road. Um, and, and we have to be really savvy about this because we're going to end up with a huge amount of people wanting support um, within the next few months. So we've, we've got to work on, um, on different ways of, of encouraging people to talk. Yes, it's easy for us because we can use social media and we can use um, the internet, but think about somebody who's 75 or 90 and they are sat in front of a television all the time. So, you know, how can we help those people? So from collectively, from mind, um, you know, any ideas that anybody's got to come forward, but which keeps people safe as well, um, you know, we'd like to hear from you. Okay. On behalf of the community of Portland, can I thank you for what you're doing? You're doing some absolutely fantastic work. And, you know, I know people really appreciate it and, uh, and I recognise that. So, you know, for me, on behalf of the whole of Copeland, thank you all for what you're doing. And uh, Jenny, Shelley, Emma, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. I'll be back uh, with more podcasts and, and more guests as we get a perspective from all sectors in Copeland. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.